It's time to say goodbye to old music and say hello to fast customer support with Service Cloud. With trusted AI and data working together, you can skip long wait times and deliver efficient, personalized service right away. All while keeping support costs low and more customers happy. Reimagine your customer support with the number one AI CRM for service. Learn what's possible at salesforce.com slash products slash service. This episode is brought to you by Carnegie Mellon's Tepper School of Business. Want to advance your career or switch fields? An MBA from Carnegie Mellon's Tepper School of Business can help. Earn your degree from a top-ranked business school with a thought-provoking curriculum, one-on-one leadership coaching, support from experienced career counselors, and full-time online hybrid and accelerated MBA formats. Join the intelligent future. Visit cmu.edu slash Tepper to learn more. Welcome to the Age of Jeremy. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to this podcast. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Age of Jeremy. I am the leader in tax, investment, and business advice. Also follow our podcast network, the Age of Radioverse, from the company Age of Radio. And you can follow us on Instagram at Age of Radioverse. Over 100 podcasts strong, and we just keep adding more and more every week. So make sure to check the Instagram feed out at Age of Radioverse and to check us out at www.ageofradio.org. That is www.ageofradio.org. You can also check me out on TikTok at Age of Jeremy and Twitter at Age of Jeremy Q. If you want to be on this podcast and chat, email me at Jeremy jeremy.quintanilla at ageofradio.org. We are looking for small business owners, influencers, and content creators to share their stories, their tips, and their tricks. No matter how small, no matter how big, we just love a good story, especially a great story from a content creator. We also have our 2022 Freedom Conference on April 22nd and April 23rd. Tickets are on sale now. It is a wealth building conference. Coach JV will be talking about mindset. Porter Shumway will be talking about insurance and how to grow your wealth with insurance vehicles. Crypto influencer Bearable Bull will be live streamed in and talking about crypto. Jordan Harry will be speaking about speed learning. And we also have our technical analysis team and crypto research team having hosting panels. It is going to be a blast. And again, that's April 22nd and April 23rd in the amazing Phoenix, Arizona. I also want to mention that we have a new project going live. It's called Collecti Labs. That website is going to be coming up. The project isn't 100% live, but the website's going to be available this week for you to check it out. Um, you can head on over to my Instagram or to my TikTok to, TikTok to see a teaser trailer. Again, that is Collecti Labs, C-O-L-L-E-C-T-Y Labs, L-A-B-S. If you can head on over to Twitter to Collecti Labs and make sure to follow the Twitter page, it would be much appreciated. You can also link over to Discord from there and join the server. Collecti Labs, which I own with Coach JV and Selman from Gee Investing is a new NFT incubator project we are getting off the ground. It is part of the ever-growing portfolio of Freedom Asset Management Group and Q Digital. We are definitely excited about the future of the crypto space, but don't worry. We do believe in diversification, but the crypto space is here to stay. So we are capitalizing on it. Now, I also recommend that you capitalize on the crypto space and you can learn about the crypto space by going to 3twarrioracademy.com. That is 3twarrioracademy.com. I know there's so many websites to go to, but that is the amazing part about having so many businesses and so many projects and so much amazing stuff that we're offering to the world. But if you go to 3twarrioracademy.com, not only can you learn about the conference, but you can learn about the crypto space. And I recommend that you learn about the crypto space. You can join our academy, or you can just head on over to YouTube and type in 3T Warrior Academy and check out some of our free YouTube videos. We just launched a new morning show called Good Morning Crypto. So make sure to check that out also. All right, let's get into today's podcast. My name is Jeremy Quintanilla. You are listening to Age of Jeremy. I'm an entrepreneur and I'm the co-founder of Age of Radio and 3T Fitness and well, other businesses that I am working on. This podcast is about everything that I learn and the trials and tribulations it took to learn them. I hope you enjoy. Today, I talk about nodes. If you are unfamiliar with what a node is, well, then you're in luck because that is what we're going to be talking about today with my guest, Mario, the node defender. Not only is he the master of nodes, in my opinion, 
He is also part of our 3T Crypto Research team at the 3T Warrior Academy. He is also one of the co-hosts of our new morning talk show, Good Morning Crypto. And he also owns and operates Phoenix Crypto Assets with me. He is a remarkable individual and one of the most knowledgeable people, most knowledgeable people that I've ever met around the crypto space. I love listening to him about his passion around nodes and his passion around passive income. You can follow him on Twitter at The Node Defender, and you can subscribe to his YouTube channel, The Node Defender. If you want to learn what a node is and learn how to make passive income, then here you are. This is my conversation with Mario, the Node Defender. Hey, Mario, how are you? Hey, Jeremy, I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing amazing. Do you want me to call you the Node Defender through this entire thing or is Mario okay? Mario is perfectly fine. Yeah. All right, cool. Did you, when you created that concept of the defender, did you want it to be like how like waters above crypto? Cause he doesn't, he doesn't like share his name like all the time. Does he? I know that he shared it with us when he was in the, like yeah, the academy, he talks, but he mentions his name. I've, I've heard him mention his name a couple of times on a few, but not often it's mentioned more often in his uh, lives on Friday. Got it. But, my intentions were were not to keep really my persona uh, secret. I yeah, I mean, I just uh, I guess it's a trend within the crypto space. Like everybody kind of wants to go by a different name, and they create these um, sort of like metaverse avatars of themselves right, yeah. with different names, right? Like yeah. I guess we could we could think of it that way. But um, it initially I didn't really know what it was and through time I'm still trying to discover who no defender is right. to be honest yeah no awesome so when we were talking last week you had mentioned that like you had gotten in cryptocurrency back in 2017 mm-hmm. so I was hoping that you could kind of talk a little bit more about like a little bit more about like how you got into that the cryptocurrency space back then and then like what what was the what happened that made you move away from it okay so yeah, I, I got into, so I had an employee at that time that was working for me and he's the one that brought up to, I mean, I was aware of Bitcoin. I had heard about Bitcoin many times, but it, it never really caught my, 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 my radar to the point yeah. of like, all right, let me check this out. What is this? You know, plus, you know, you know what mainstream media says about crypto and back then it was even right. worse. So, yeah. um, so one of my employees was like, Hey, I, I started buying crypto through this app called Coinbase and Coinbase was probably around for not that long at that time. And I was like, cool. And it was just so simple. So I was like, cool. So I created an account and I also started buying some crypto. And then I started going down the rabbit hole that I'm sure a lot of people that when they start going into crypto, they go down that rabbit hole of trying to figure, I mean, at least for me, I'm curious. So I like to understand how things work. Well, and what's cool about crypto though, is there's like lots of rabbit holes to go down and even back. Cause that's when I got in, that's when I kind of got more introduced to it was probably back in that 2017, maybe 2018, Uh like into 2017 timeframe. And like, I just, once you get into it, then you're like, Oh, what does this mean? And then you just kind of go, Oh, what does this mean? And then what does this mean? And then like, Oh, what about this? So, yeah. Yeah. And I got into, and it, that was very late in 2017. Uh, this was, this was like early November timeframe. So I, I got into it. I started look. I bought a, a little bit of uh, Bitcoin. So Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency that I purchased. I bought a little bit of Bitcoin and then I, I don't really remember what steps I took after that, but I mean, I, I do recall just starting to research like all these different cryptocurrencies and what they were. And me, I like to understand things. So I started looking into their technology and then I came across XRP one time and there was really not that many places you could get XRP at that time. Um, I do remember that I was able to get XRP in Kraken, but I think they only listed it. So I got XRP before that they even listed it on Kraken and it was this really weird swap. So which it wasn't even a DEX. So this is really weird. So I don't know if you ever <laughs> came across it, but it's it was a website that was essentially like a DEX. But what you would do is you would select the coin that you're going to be tra- so like a just like a DEX, you select the coin that you want right. to convert from and the coin that you want, and then you have to send them like manually. You have to manually send them the token that you that you want to convert from, and then they send you back the token that you requested. So That's out right. of good good faith. <laughs> oh my god! No wonder yeah. people are like sketch on and, some of this and that, stuff. And I, I've and never I think, come across that. 
And I think it was called <laughs> Changely. I want to, I think it was called Changely. And uh, I remember that they got so popular that their transactions were so backed up. So it took like three, four days just for me to get my XRP. I was freaking out. <laughs> it's almost like they wanted to create the system, but didn't have the, I guess yeah. the soft, like the infrastructure to support what they were doing. So they made yeah. it like a, like a uh, Jimmy rigged version of it or something like a, like a, a weird version of it to see how it would to work. Yeah. And that's why they sent it. And then you sent it back. That's really right. funny. That's weird. But I got my XRP. So I was really happy. And then I right, became rather really than big, getting like yeah. robbed. <laughs> Yeah, And I became a really big advocate of, of XRP. It's funny because then I really like XRP started to grow up on me quite a lot. And I started like researching it a lot. And, and then that's when they announced the partnership with MoneyGram, which made XRP take off. And I was making a whole bunch of money, but just, uh, yeah. So what made me move away and it wasn't really, yeah, I just, I lost, I lost that. I lost that attention just because of that bad experience of January, just seeing oh, my portfolio it. at when a 10 X portfolio- level. And then rode all the way back down. And then yeah. the FUD, like, oh, China is banning crypto or whatever it was, you know, f- which we all know that that does nothing these days. But <laughs> at that point, it did. And yeah. I was like, I got so upset because one, I was very, I was very new to investing in general. So for me to see myself in just a, I want to say like a month and a half, I made so much money, just 10x my portfolio in a month and a half. And then saw it go all the way back down. I actually didn't sell anything, which I'm glad I didn't. I kept everything and, and just, yeah, Wrote just wait. <laughs> yeah. So that's funny too. Cause a lot of people, it's interesting. So at the time, were you doing investing in stocks or, or had you had just started with investing in cryptocurrency? Yeah. I had bought some stocks here and there, but like Robin hood type stuff, I've never really been a big investor, even in stocks. Yeah, it's interesting because I've had people that their first foray into in investing is with cryptocurrencies, and they mm-hmm. did it at the time that everything was like you know back in twenty twenty or into twenty twenty one and whatever when everything mm-hmm. was really really you know going back up and everybody was getting into it and Doge and Shiba and all that stuff and so so I guess twenty twenty one um like yeah. um, but uh but. The people had just gone into that, so they thought that that's what all investing was. Yeah, and so I'm when they were telling me, I was like, "No, that's not how it normally works. This is just happening because there's a bunch of money flooding into this system, and it's a brand yeah. new system." And so, right. and and yeah, it's just really interesting the way that people kind of look at investing and and think about it. And I've never been. I'm happy that what I, I'm happy about Robinhood's mission about trying to make everything available to retail investors. I just right. don't necessarily think that they do it the best way because, right. you know, they have to, they make their money off of order flow. And so they have to have orders constantly coming in to make their money. So it entices them to push stuff out to people to get them to purchase, to buy and sell. And so right. it's not like a very, unless you are day trading, you're buying and selling and buying and selling to try to capitalize on any type of profit. It's not the best, in my opinion, for investing for long term. But um, yeah, and I, and I wouldn't even call it investing. It's like, oh, one of my friends would say, oh, look, maybe you should look at Twitter shares or, you know, stock. Yeah. And, I, you know, I would buy like a hundred bucks worth of it. So it wasn't, I wasn't actively investing with the purpose of investing. Like investing came very late in my life. Like I want to say in the last year, actually, so <laughs> like the real perception and and vision that I have towards investing was obtained in the last year. Yeah, no, absolutely. So did w- did you buy your first miner back in 2017? No, miner. My first miner was uh, Feb- uh, late January 2021, so a year ago. Do you think? Do you are you still an advocate for miners, or do you think that miners are in the past? Well, so I, I, I got into mining obviously because I wanted to make uh, money. Yeah. I wanted to make passive income. And uh, the fact that you get crypto, it, I just wanted to use it as, a, as an accumulation strategy. Um, but I got into, I, I wanted to get into GPU mining, but GPUs were just so expensive and I found it pretty pointless to, to do it. So I came across uh, ASIC miners, which are for Bitcoin. Um, and I think you could do Dogecoin with it too. Um, and I found I found some pre-owned ones being sold for a pretty good price. So I I bought I bought a half a dozen of those, and um, I didn't realize that they had special electricity requirements. And <laughs> I hooked one up, and it worked fine. The minute I turned the second one on, all my power went out, and I was like, okay, of that's course. weird. 
So I went to the breaker, flipped the switch, and then did repeat the process. <laughs> Everything goes down. And then I go research and I'm like, oh, these require 220 volts minimum. Yep. So yeah. I had an electrician do the whole thing. And I just, you, have, me, it you have them at your store too, right? Yeah. They're yeah. So I have house. a, yeah, I had, I have a, so I have a store and I have a basement and, um, I, I was able to, I, I mean, I did a really nice setup in the basement with ethernet wires passive. I mean, yeah. I'm into those things. So I was really proud of what I did. Yeah, but no, <laughs> of course I ran it. I ran it for, I ran it for about a month until one of my employees calls me saying that the lights are, uh, in the store are flickering. And I was like, Oh, what? <laughs> so what time? And then it turns. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go. No, I was going to say that it turns out that the electrician didn't really advise me correctly. And the power that was being drawn from the main panel was the wire. The wire was not capable of handling all that voltage. So then it actually started melting in, in the main panel. So it was really good that the light started flickering because it avoided a freaking fire. Yeah, I was just going to say it would have started a freaking fire. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> so I sold, I was able to sell those miners for, for almost double of what I bought them for. So that was really nice. But you don't have any, because you don't have any physical miners now or you still have some? I do. I, okay. So then, then I was like, you know what? I have a graphics card on my computer at home. Let me take that out of my computer because I'm not gaming at this point. So let me use it. And I ended up grabbing just a couple of extra graphics cards. So I have one miner with uh five gpus wow so how much are what are you mining on it uh so i use nice hash and the nice thing about nice hash is that it it you're you're renting them your your computational power and then they mine whatever is most profitable and pay you back in bitcoin so i could Got be it. mining ethereum or i could be mining um you know whatever other coin and i get pay, paid back in ethereum is it is it pretty decent passive income for people that want to get in so, so how much did it cost like what kind how much did something like that cost so i built it myself because okay. since you know that's one of the things that i do is build computers right, and right. fix computers so i built it myself so i saved on the labor but everything together cost me a, just over 3500 for all the hardware um i probably got my money back in about i want to say in about three months but that's because we got i caught that that you wave, that wave up. off the way up in April. So yeah. because I was I was rotating it into other things, I ended up just making my money back a little bit quicker. But otherwise, right now as it stands, I've looked into it for a couple of people that have asked me, and you're looking at about ten to twelve months return on investment. Yeah, that's what about right now. And the miner that we have at the, the academy, which is John's, but we just house it at the academy. Um, yeah, is that. Uh, it, that I think he bought it for thirty five hundred dollars made. It only mm -hmm. it only mines Ethereum, but you can change it if you want to go in and change what it mines, right? Um, and so yeah. it mines Ethereum. I think he's I think his return when we calculated was close to what you just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it it doesn't get much better than that. It's not like there's a trick. I've already I've already done a lot of research, and it's not like there's a trick for you to make a little bit more. I mean, you can overclock the GPUs. Um, I actually run a software. I run an operating system on the miner that allows me to install preset overclock configurations designed specifically for that graphics card. So it will get the best performance without, um, you know, causing overheating, for example. Um, and yeah, it's producing the most that it can, but it's, I wouldn't recommend it for somebody that is getting into it. I wouldn't recommend it. I would probably recommend getting into a node opportunity. Right. That's going to be a better return on investment. Which brings me to the next thing. So you go by the node defender. Yes. <laughs> so what? So this is kind of like a two-part question. So what is a a node? And then mm -hmm. why did you choose the name node defender? <laughs> okay. So a node is essentially a server that is uh, providing, um, is, is helping the blockchain network. Okay. So you could have several types of nodes. Um, the best ones are full nodes because they're a full copy of the blockchain. And the more full nodes that there are, the more decentralized and redundant a blockchain is. Um, so it, it's sort of, sort of like the miners for the proof of stake blockchains. So mining is, is for the proof of work and proof of stake use nodes, which are just these servers that are providing uh, or helping the network. Got it. Got it. And Second, so, so the second part of the question, why did I choose the node defender? So I initially came up with the idea of calling myself the node runner, but then um, I noticed that there was already a couple of people in the space that were not directly going by that name, but 
kind of had that Similar in them, where it's yeah. like the Node Runner. And I didn't want to essentially copy anybody. And again, you know, to touch on what we spoke initially, it's just, I don't know. I'm exploring who the no defender is and it just popped in my head and I'm like, no defender sounds pretty cool because I'm trying to defend my wealth or defend. Oh, that's project. a good way to think about it. I didn't think about you know? it because I was when I, you first, so funny. So as you know, I didn't know you went by that. And so yeah. like when I started really pushing my Twitter account um, and, uh-huh. and doing lots of Twitter, I was like, Oh, this no defender following me. That's really cool. I wonder how he got like, why that specifically had happened. And then you had mentioned once that you were like liking all my stuff on Twitter. I'm all like, yeah. but I can't find you anywhere. <laughs> and then I was like, Oh, Mario's the no defender. Now it makes more sense. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I guess I just found a passion within that within that area of crypto, like um, early early on. Yeah, you were very passionate about it. Yeah, yeah, I I became very passionate with it, just understanding the whole infrastructure part of 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 the, of uh, what a node is, and and um, and yeah, and I just and again, I I'm just exploring who this persona node defender is, and see where it where it takes me. At right now, my my only goal is just to provide education, just be able to impact somebody with any tweet that I put out or any information that I put out, be able to change their life potentially. So how did you, how did you come? So when in the timeline from when you started getting into the Academy and back into cryptocurrencies and really this, and I, cause I know it's, it's diff, it's really difficult to talk about this weird period of time between, cause I look at this really weird period of time between like 2020 the, t- the middle of 2020 and then all the way through 2021 was a life changing period of time. And it's yeah. interesting. One of the things that was kind of uh, interesting for me hearing waters above talk the other day about where w- coach Jay Z's or coach Jay Z's coach JV's that'd be cool if it was coach, Jay-Z. <laughs> but coach JV's like Gamatria reading. And when you yeah. apply that to the Academy and then this is going to be a booming year, like my whole life changed from the middle of 20. 20- 20 yeah. through 2021. And so, so during that period of time, is that when, when was it that you started learning and finding out about nodes? Because it's, it's, it's really weird because I find that there's these weird pockets in the, that timeline of mid 20 mm-hmm. through 2021, where all of a sudden people are talking about Doge, Shiba Inu, everything's cryptocurrencies. Then all of a sudden everything's about NFTs. And then like right around the time that you started talking about nodes, then everybody's talking about nodes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's not as prevalent as the NFTs because I don't think people, a lot of people understand it or how to do it. But where in that timeline did, did you start learning about buying the node for rather than doing the proof of work with the miners. Well, I got into the miner first. Right, right, um, right. And that, and yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was early 2021. I got into the mining part of it. And um, for as far as the nodes, I mean, I mean, we're always going to think we're not early enough, but I, I, I always say that I was already late in the game because. <laughs> yeah, but already- when you had bought your first strong node, which we can yeah. touch on that in a minute, was that your fir- was strong node, your first node? It was, yes. Okay. And but you bought it at how much was your first node for strong? That that so strong was actually what introduced me to nodes. Got in it, general. got it. Okay. So before I even understood what the whole node part of a blockchain was, it was strong that kind of gave me that that first impression and made me go down that that path. So I got my first strong node um for about four hundred and forty dollars a token. So it was about four thousand four hundred dollars for a node. Oh god, gotcha. which so was, was which was late. I mean, if which we look was still, at price today, right, right. I paid more back then than what it's worth today because we've been having a little price dip, but right. Um, but you so how many okay, so so that was the first node, and then you were very yeah. adamant about teaching and educating people about strong nodes and creating passive income. Yeah, I became very excited because uh when I saw the their the vision that the team had. Um, I started looking at, I started looking at the, the, you know, David Moss as a CEO, like what has he done in the past? What, what projects has, has he been involved with? And um, I started seeing all the things that they were working on and all the partnerships that they were, they were creating. And I just became really, um, you know, bullish for the sake of a crypto term. I became really bullish on, on the project itself. And then that led me into other, into start, starting to follow um, a few of the node people on Twitter. And um, there's a Twitter account called the Node Catcher, and he's really he was really my I guess I could say the role model, as the person I look to as far as um, what projects to look for in the space. 
Got it. And then, yeah, I just started going down my own path and, and researching by myself. Yep. So how does, how does a node generate the passive income then? Like how does that, so if someone has, so, so, okay. So, so first, how do, how do, how does someone, how does it generate passive income? Like, obviously when you do the mine, I guess just explain that piece of it. Yeah. So people understand, because I think that's one of the hard things that people have a conceptual understanding yeah. of is how it actually gets you passive income. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, traditionally, most blockchains actually don't reward node operators like regular nodes. And by regular nodes, I mean just uh, what what Strong actually creates is an endpoint, which is essentially just a connection point for the network. Okay. So, for example, if the more connection points to the network you have spread spread around the world, the less latency, the better the, the network's going to perform, essentially. it's They're not going to be full nodes, meaning they're not going to have full copies of the entire black blockchain, but they are connection points to the blockchain. So that's what StrongBlock is doing. So their mission is to make partnerships with these blockchains that are not rewarding node operators. And then through the creation of their endpoints, reward node operators and simplify the process too. Because um strong they do everything for you you pay a monthly fee and they they keep your your endpoint up to date uh running and you don't have to worry about it besides collecting rewards but then you have to set so you you license the server so like how does it how do they benefit from you having the how do they benefit from you having the node as opposed to them just creating a bunch of nodes themselves is it just because it's spread further out or how how does that benefit them that's a really good question. And I've seen that being asked multiple times. And what I always understand, because it has to do with, with decentralization. Got it. Um, although they, they are still the ones that um, host the endpoint to some extent through their partners, data centers and all that stuff. Um, it has to do with decentralization and wanting, being part of their mission to create this ecosystem where you have people making passive income from their their platform, but they could totally go do it all themselves. Yes, but that's not part of their their uh, their mission. Got it. So, do you have to run pa- like so with the mining? It obviously uses with like the actual physical miner. It uses yeah. your electricity. So, yeah. what besides paying the fee for the licensing fee, right? Mm-hmm. That's for the server, correct? To uh, license that or. Wow. Yeah, with strong specifically, they charge they charge us about twenty five bucks. I mean, it depends on what the, the the gas fee for Ethereum is, but got it. But then, so then, do you have to have a computer running at all time for that to work? No. Is it no. just it's just working, and you give them the money, yeah. it creates the node, you do the yeah. licensing fee, and then it's constantly running. Yeah, so it's it's an investment that is not liquid. You have to the so the way it works is you have to give up ten tokens. You have to okay. give them the ten tokens of strong. So at current prices, you're looking at about 3,700 bucks and you don't get those back. What you get is a continuous reward of about 0.095. I mean, it's somewhere along those lines per day. So meaning usually in about a hundred days, you get your full 10 tokens back. And then obviously your return on investment on a, on a dollar, dollar perspective just depends on on the, the value of right. the token. So then what type of transactions, so then what's Strong's plan for what type of transactions are going to be running on across their network? So does that make sense? So uh, like, like if we think of like XRP, right? The transactions are yeah. the transferring of the money from, you know, yeah. the one place to another place. So what yeah. does that look like from Strong? So, I mean, that's a really good example. And we actually saw that XRP a couple of months ago had a, had a time where it was being, um, it was very congested. The network was suffering from, from a lot of activity okay. and it became very congested. And there was a lot of talks during that time that um, this is where Strong could come in and help. Where So the way Strong works is they make partnerships, like I mentioned before, they make partnerships directly with, with the blockchains, Got right? It. So they will make a partnership. They've made partnerships with, with Polygon, with Phantom. They have DVPN on there. And so by making these partnerships directly with the blockchains, they come in as, as the guys that can... Um, offer more stability to their network to the the creation of these endpoints and so that's the value that they come in with to these blockchains and um from a from a partnership standpoint they haven't had to do it but they they then have the ability to tap into money from the foundation so if they need money to support their their operation they could you know put in a request for for example polygon and say hey uh you know, we can we tap into some of the money that you have in 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 the 
in the foundation and then you know they get the money right. from the foundation so strong's really goal is are grant, grants they don't so, they don't have to pay back so strong is really focused on creating stabilization by utilizing all of the different endpoints that people are creating when they purchase the node right correct got yeah it, got it got it so is strong then your favorite so then so then strong is your favorite node or do you have other nodes that you like? <laughs> um, yeah. Cause I know when I There's first met others. you, it was about strong and right. strong seems to be, you know, just the stuff that I've learned from you prior to us talking about it right now. Mm-hmm. I think that that, that mission of strong, especially when, you know, we, when we got a full picture of what they're, what they were trying to do, I think yeah. that that's one of the most bullish in my opinion, yeah. Um, infrastructures that I'm bullish about because that's really what it does is that if we run into problems with congestivity or if we have a project, whatever, you know, company it is, I guess, or project it is that they can let, you know, use the strong network to help trade up some of the, those transaction processes and help with that piece of it. And so, <clears throat> so I'm really bullish on strong, but so what are some of the other nodes that you think are going to be really big or other projects that you like where you are investing in nodes? Yeah. And uh, just to say, so the the reason why I talk about strong mostly is just because I see, so for somebody that's new to the space, um, it's, it's something, it's a project that's really easy for them to, for someone that's not tech savvy. Got it. I mean, I'm okay with setting up a Linux server. I'm okay with all that technical stuff, but for the person, for the typical person, that's not um, comfortable with that sort of uh, technical level, then strong makes it super simple. Um, so that's the only reason why I tend to talk about strong more and it's just, just because I feel like people can take advantage of it more easy and, and therefore create a passive income easier. But I do have other projects that I'm, that I, that I, um, that I'm very excited about. And I think that with, with a strong model, we can see a lot of other projects also start to offer, um, rewards or better rewards or reward better the, the node operators. And, um, I mean, we have projects like Gala. Gala sees it to the point where they reward their node operators and they've created an ecosystem where people can buy node licenses and, and you get rewarded for having those, those nodes. Um, you have projects that are emerging like pre-search. Uh, they're still on, they're still on uh, uh, beta. So their mainnet has not launched. And so the, they're not really rewarding node operators um, to the full structure of how it's going to be for now. It's just sort of like a, um, just to cover whatever the costs are. Right. And so I really uh, like pre-search. What does, yeah. uh, so just for the listeners, what does pre-search do? Like, yeah. how, how can someone so go pre- out and use pre-search right now? So pre-search, anybody can use pre-search and it's essentially a Google off the blockchain, like a decentralized search engine. Right. And uh, you could go to presearch.com and you can create a free account. And for every search that you do, you get rewarded in pre tokens, which, if I'm not mistaken, is 0.1 token uh, of a token for each search, but it is limited to, I think, 25 searches a day. Um, it's really nice as well the way that they've designed the advertising part of it because you can you can advertise using yeah. um, you can pay for the for the pre for the for the keywords using pre search and it's really cool the way that they've designed it and I think that this will help solve a lot of the problems that we face when it comes to censorship with some of these mainstream um, platforms like Google yeah Yahoo, so it blocks so your information than when you're using yeah. pre search right. One of the things that I do like about pre-search though, is sometimes when it pulls up the search and I'm like, Oh, I don't, let me see what something else says. It has the ability on the side of all of the different brow, like search engines. I don't know. I said browser search engines and you can just go click on the one that you want. And then it opens that up. So I'm actually a really big fan of pre-search also. Like those are the two. I think uh, when you told me about pre-search the first time, I also like the fact that it's a little, I don't want to, it's like, I guess liquid in the sense that if you wanted to, I guess for lack of a better way to say this, remove your position. You can just sell the node back to them or like sell your coins yeah. from the node. Right. Yeah. So pre-search pre-searches pre-searches um, system works a little bit different to strong. You're not giving up. You're not buying. So you're buying in, but you're buying in with uh with a sort of like a staking. So anybody that's used to staking, that's sort of how they do it. Uh, in order for you to create a node, you need to have a minimum of 2000 tokens, which are staked into the node that you create. And you will only earn for as long as you have those 2000 coins minimum staked into the node. So at any point you want to cash out your position, you could just unstake the 2000 or whatever 
tokens you have on there. You can just unstake them, send them to an exchange or a DEX and, and sell them. Yep. So you can liquidate your position at any point. Nice. Nice. Were there any That's other, really nice. Yeah. Were there any other projects you wanted to mention? Yeah. So uh, mentioned Gala research. I mean, Gala Barrett's entry is a little high right now. Yeah, I was so going to say, that was all like, Gala's pretty rough to get into. Like a hundred grand I right now for a note. On one of the, so I looked at the price that, so for listeners that don't know this, we own a uh, company that is going to be doing some uh, stuff here in the future that we'll be talking more about on this podcast mm-hmm. on following on all of our social medias. Um, but, uh, but so I was looking at that and it's funny while looking at the, the price of the nodes rise just in yeah. the short period of time. Short when, period of time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um, uh, a lot of these, a lot of projects were using the word node to take advantage of the fact that it was, a, that there was a hype buildup around it. And so they started creating a lot of these projects that really had no utility, nothing backing them up. And some of them ended up being, uh, what was one of, was it one of them like samurai or something like that? Yeah, was so that? it's it all started with Ring, Ring Financial, and yeah. then it it you know all of them. Um, so they started forking, and a fork is a term for when you copy the code and you just modify it for your own purpose. And um, they started forking Ring's code and just creating duplicates essentially. And so it ended up that Ring supposedly had a a flaw in the in the smart contract, and somebody noticed that flaw and was able to to. Um, hijack a whole bunch of coins and dump them in the market. <laughs> and so because all these other projects were forks, they all started suffering from the same problem. And I ended up getting into that Samurai one just because. Which sucks because it has such a cool name. <laughs> like that, when you started talking about it, it's like, oh, we should just buy that because it's called Sam. I mean, that's a horrible way to make a decision and I would never do yeah, that. But, but I was, like, <laughs> for the record, I was totally against every time that I spoke with anybody that they mentioned ring. I was like, do not get into that. Like I was so, <laughs> I was, yeah, I was so against all those projects because I understood that they were not nodes. They right. were just you taking advantage of, of the word node and calling it a node, but it was essentially just a, just a basket of, of, a, of a pool. And eventually that pool was going to run out. <laughs> right. Right. So then how do people, uh, how do people stay safe? So one of the things that the, the biggest problem that I have with especially the explosion of the cryptocurrency space is the fact that a lot of people get taken advantage of in the space. Yeah. So is do people have to well, obviously they have to worry about that even with nodes too because people are yeah. just using that term because it's popular and then they're taking advantage of people. So are is there anything that people can do to like like protect themselves or like make sure that they're getting good because what I'm afraid of is that people are this is what I feel that happens people get so afraid of being taken advantage of that then they're just going to miss out on a bunch of opportunities because of the fact that they don't want to get into it because they know that there's you know bad people out there that have taken advantage of people and Mm -hmm. I feel that that's one of the things that we see a lot especially now that I'm more involved with Twitter and I I see a lot of more people talk about nodes and the things that people say about certain things and projects so is there something that people can do that can help them like get into this space but feel safe getting into the space yeah I mean I stress I stress that topic a lot when I talk to people that are new to the space I stress the security part of it a lot um and it's one of the things that I feel like we need more in the space is just an education towards security and making sure that you're well protected. And most of the time, to be honest, though, it, it, it begins with just paying attention and, and looking um, at how you're doing whatever you're doing. And what, with this, I mean, so for example, if, you're, if you heard about a project, I mean, in the crypto space, unfortunately, you can't just go to Twitter uh, sorry, Google and search for it. Because if I, and this just happened a few moments ago, as I was talking to abs, um, he Googled strong block and the first one, well, on my, on mine is just one, but on, on his computer, the first four results were ads and they were all fake websites, scams. Jesus. Yeah. So the way that I recommend people to do it is, uh, follow the project in an official platform, like like their official Twitter page or their discord, and then go to the website following the official links on, on their social uh, platforms. Got it. Okay. So then that's one of the ways that you can get around. And And which is, which makes sense, which makes sense. Cause a lot of times when we're talking about projects, you or abs or Antonio or someone will be like, just go to the freaking Twitter page and then hit the link to the website so that you can get to the actual website. (laughs) And the last, and the last thing that's very important. And this is like the, the, 
the top one. Never, ever, 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 ever give your seed phrase to anything or anyone. Yeah. Nothing that you do from within the the crypto space, you should ever have to put your seed phrase yeah. unless you're restoring a wallet because you deleted it or whatever. Right, right. Nothing that you do will ever ask you for your seed phrase. They will just ask you to sign a transaction or you know send for, for when you're sending or purchasing. Never ever share that seed phrase with anybody or anything. Okay. Yeah. Does that happen a lot that people share their seed phrase? Like, does that how people get scammed? Like you guys yeah, pay way more attention to it than me. How do you find out that they're getting scammed? Is it on Twitter? Or like, how, uh, yeah, do, you, how sh- do you learn about it? Yeah. People, sh- people share it all the time, whether it's like through a YouTube video or Twitter. Yeah. And one of, one of my, one of my employees, it almost happened to him last week because oh. he was trying to, he was creating an account for Gala and he went, he did what I just explained going through Google and yeah. he ended up going into a fake Gala website. And at some point I started asking him for his MetaMask god. recovery phrase. Oh my God. Did he almost give it to them? No, he turned to me and he said, do I need to put this in? I'm like, no, that's <laughs> fake. <laughs> and before that he had already put in an email and a password as if he was creating an account. Oh my and I god. said to him, did you use a password I use for anything else? He's like, yeah, this is like the password I use for everything. I'm like, okay, log into all your stuff and change your password immediately. <laughs> Oh my God. That's so scary for people. It is. Especially because I mean, it's so sad too, because like, that's one of the things that's really frustrating about this space is just because being obviously all of us are advocates for the blockchain and the cryptocurrency space. And then when we're trying to explain to them that it is beneficial and it should be safe, there's an, all of these things that are unsafe for people. Yeah. And it really, it wasn't his fault. And I I guess for that reason, I can see that somebody's that's getting into the space. It can be so easy for them to get scammed. Yeah. Because I mean, who, if you're going through Google, who's going to think that you're going to get into a fake website searching through Google? Well, when we were doing, when I had to file a form with the SEC, mm-hmm. um, the the form D, I went to Google, typed in form D or whatever, right? And I went through it and I kept getting this weird block. Like I was logging in and then nothing was happening to be able to get to the form D. So I called the securities and exchange commission and I said, Hey, look, I'm going through this. He's like, well, how are you going through it? And he says, well, I'm Googling it or I'm Googling form D and whatever. And he's like, and then you're going through the sec link. And he's like, yeah. And he's like, well, it's not a fake link, but we won't let you in. If you go that way, you have to actually go type in the website or wow. go to, I, so then he's like, okay, so this is how you do it. Go, go to your, you are your, you know, web browser URL browser. and you have to do IRS dot or sec.gov or whatever their main website is. And then you go mm-hmm. over to one side, click it and then go to form D and it opens it up. And then same page looks exactly the same. Everything was exactly the same. And then it lets you log in. Like it will block you for that. I'm imagining for that specific reason, right. maybe that they won't let you get to it from a Google page. I'm a guessing, wow. I'm guessing, but. I just thought it was really interesting that they have that. So there's no possibility of getting, I guess, I guess the, scammed the, or something. <laughs> yeah. And I guess, and I guess the recommendation that I can give to anybody listening that that's new to the space is that if you're, if you're trying to access a, a website or a project, just never click on any Google ads. So when you yeah. get those results, um, the top ones are typically ads and they, they show ad. So just never click on any of those. Just, Try to go down and, but best way is just go on their Twitter, look for them. So crypto, crypto operates a lot with, from within the Twitter and discord. That's like where all the crypto projects typically are most predominantly uh, presence in and, and some telegram too. But why do you think that that is? I don't know. I mean, just Twitter really grew as the platform where all all the crypto people are. And yeah, yeah. probably because it's easier for like talking to people back and forth on Twitter. I'd imagine. And, and Discord just makes it a lot easier for a project to really have all these different channels right. and all these different conversations and just putting out messages. Yeah. So if so, who? What is the best way? So if someone wants to get involved in nodes, what should they? Should they just find a project that they like and see if they have enough money and buy it? <laughs> or how do you think? How should someone do it? Should they contact you? Reach out to you on Twitter for help or what? Like, how does someone get to be able to do what you yeah. learn? to be able to make that well real quick you own a lot of nodes right yeah personally you personally i mean you own quite a bit of strong nodes right yeah i own a substantial amount it's been enough (laughs) fortunately it's been enough to create more freedom for my life and that's why i think that's one of the reasons why i also 
started going by the name No Defender is just because it it made a huge impact in my life and I guess that's why I started right. wanting to call, call, go by the name of Node something. <laughs> Do you have any other per, uh, personal nodes, nodes that are in your own portfolio, I guess, for lack of a better way to say it? Nodes that are in your portfolio that aren't, that generate you income besides strong? Yeah. I have also another project that I got into right at launch, which was, which is called Atlas. Yeah. Atlas Cloud. And um, they, I've been I've been very cautious about mentioning it because I'm okay with taking the risk, but I don't want to I don't want somebody else to go by what I'm with what I'm saying. Right, and, that makes sense. You know, it was very early, but the team so far has come out. Everybody knows who they are. Um, they've done everything correctly on the launch to prevent whales and prevent manipulation of prices, and so far everything is looking good. So it, actually, I started mentioning them a couple of times on Twitter in the last week. Just because I'm gaining that confidence, so that's another project. And essentially, they're they're just mimicking Strong. So Strong is still the pioneer. Anybody that's starting out, I say Strong. And the reason why I say Strong is because they've been around for 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 a long time. Um, they've got a strong team. They have a strong mission. Um, and I I just don't think they're going anywhere. Can can their can the reward structure change? I mean, I think it has to. There's no way it can stay sustainable at a hundred day ROI for a very long time. So I think at some point it will change. But even if it decreases by a half, if it takes six months for you to get your ROI, I mean, how many investments can you make? Yeah, how many days? <laughs> so I know that's, that's one amazing. of the things. Sometimes when I hear people say, "It's like, well, it's going to take six months." It's like, where are you going to go get a return on your money in six months? Like, exactly. where are you going to get the exact same amount of money that you put in in six months and then start yeah. gaining? You know real return yeah. off of it right real return, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and so that's why i always say strong because and and going back to your point as to what i would recommend for somebody starting out i guess it would have to depend on their technical level like do you have experience in managing servers and by servers i mean like down to the linux um yeah. linux are there nuds that, are there nuds are there nodes that require that yeah there's nodes that you have to completely manage them yourself yeah. so you have to set them up yourself you have to update them yourself Keep them up to date. Uh, sorry, up to date. If if they're not up to date, then you start being penalized penalized by by the by the network. So yeah, for somebody that has minimal technical uh, knowledge and just wants to gain some exposure, create some passive income, strong is is my go to. But Atlas is growing on me too. So they've they've uh, but and Atlas kind of is make- trying to do the same type of concept, then right. Right. And they're just following strong. And so I see strong as a pioneer in the space. So I feel like all the other projects are just trying to copy. So let's see where Atlas goes. They say that they're not trying to copy and that they're going to try to, <laughs> they're going to try to change something in it. They're or? going to try to take a different path. So let's see what happens. Cool. So then what is, where do people re- find you? So what are your plans for your movement with the node defender? Like I know that you're heavily, you know, you util- utilize Twitter. You have a yeah. YouTube page currently yeah. right so is that what you're going to be focusing on is doing youtube and and twitter and or what what is your plan for that or are you trying to figure that out yeah i mean the end the end road the end goal i'm still trying to figure out but essentially what what i have in mind right now is um um i want to so being part of the academy the warrior academy joining the academy yeah. uh, late 2020 and uh, being part of it and then eventually becoming part of the research team, it it really opened up my mind and made me realize how much I feel good and enjoy helping other people without expecting anything in return. So that's the reason why I, I, I just became a really big uh, advocate in a way of teaching others without ha- expecting anything. And um with the node defender, my 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 goal right now is a little bit like that. It's just I, I want to give knowledge and not expect anything in return. I'm not really thinking of creating anything that I could monetize off of it at the moment. I'm right. not planning on monetizing my YouTube. Uh, I haven't really been prioritizing it because I've been focusing just on all the other things that I've got that we've got going right. on. Right, and you and, own uh, you own two stores too. Yeah. So I, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on, and I'm just trying to make sure that I'm prioritizing the right things. And although I do want and I will be creating content for the YouTube channel, it's it's going to be most mostly along the lines of just providing education 
and hopefully impacting somebody just like I was impacted. Because okay. how many courses? So just in case the listeners don't know, uh, Mario, aka the No Defender, also has video courses in our Three T Warrior Academy. So when you're a subscriber to the Three T Warrior Academy, there's courses inside of there that he teaches. What which uh, what courses do you teach in there? Or like what do you, what which one of the ones that you did? Oh. Yeah, any uh, I mean it, I did a lot, a lot. From, from like from like security, wallet security, how to keep your your seed phrases uh secure, um how to set up wallets, how to transfer from wallets, uh how to set up exchanges, um some of the coins explaining some of the coins like Adam Cosmos like what what is yeah. the block what does that blockchain do? What you know what what are they trying to accomplish? Um I've I've added some videos on some of these passive uh income for nodes just ex- the whole process of how to create a strong node, how to claim the rewards, how to pay for the fees. So from anybody that's with inside of the Academy, they can, they can already obtain, um, they can already watch how it's done basically. Cool. Cool. So then if people want to get a hold of you, uh, they can reach out to you on Twitter then, right? I yeah, mean, they absolutely. can follow you on Twitter. I mean, this is what, not like going follow, like follow Mario. Don't like go and like, um. yeah, and my messages are open. So if anybody has any questions and wants me to provide some guidance on how they could get started, uh, I mean, that's, that's my current mission with, with the Twitter page, essentially, it's just put out information that, that I, that is impacting my life and hopefully impact somebody else's. Cool. Well, that's a great mission. So thank you so much, Mario. I really appreciate you jumping on this. I My goal is to have you uh, on more often as the Node Defender, so to keep people up to date with nodes, because I think it's yeah. a very big missed opportunity for people. Um, and then also, we'll be doing a lot more of other stuff just because I enjoy talking with you guys and having co-hosts, I guess, when I'm having conversations yeah, and I'm, with I'm people. Truly, <laughs> my, other, my other mission is really trying to master passive income. Yeah. And, and, and really explore that avenue, not just within nodes. So I'm going to continue putting that out there, like not just from within nodes. I mean, in crypto, there's so many ways to make passive income. It's almost too good to be true. Yeah, that is very, very true. And, 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 and not a lot of people know about that because right now everybody just talks about NFTs. Yeah. <laughs> as it seems but like. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, Jeremy. It was a real pleasure. I really appreciate it. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. And we will have you on again. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you, Jeremy. Bye. That is it for our show today. Thank you so much for spending time with me. If you can make sure to follow Mario the Node Defender on his Twitter and subscribe to his YouTube channel, just search the Node Defender and it should pop right up. Also, I wanted to remind you that our project, Collecti Labs, the website goes live this week. If you can head on over to Twitter um, and search for Collecti, that's C O L L E C T Y Labs, L A B S, Collecti Labs on Twitter. I would appreciate it if you go ahead and give that a follow. You can also link over to the Discord from there. Collecti Labs is a business that I own with Coach JV and Selman from Gee Investing. It's an NFT incubator project we are getting off the ground. It is part of the ever growing portfolio of Freedom Asset Management Group, which is owned by Coach JV, and Q Digital, which is owned by my holding company, Quintanilla Consolidated or Q Consolidated. We are definitely excited about the future of the crypto space, but don't worry, we do believe in diversification. But again, the crypto space is here to stay. So I suggest that you learn about it and get involved with it and understand it. And as always, be thankful, grateful, and kind. Talk to you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to The Age of Jeremy. Make sure to subscribe on your favorite podcatcher. If you can do me a favor, please rate this podcast if your podcatcher allows you to. Talk to you soon. Okay, everybody, it's Michael E. Cullen II. And I'm Sesame Encarta from the All Too Real 2 podcast. We're passionate about movies, TV, and pretty much all things pop culture. Dive into the chaos of failed sitcoms, direct-to-video sequels, and the quirky realms of cinema and TV. Join us every Thursday for your dose of All Too Real 2 entertainment. We'll guide you through debates like whether Howard the Duck qualifies as a superhero. Ponder if Larry the Cable Guy could be the new rock or Schwarzenegger. Discover if some shows and movies 
movies should have stayed in the cutting room. Ever heard of a sitcom featuring that dictator with the funny mustache? Well, we watched it. We're dedicated to unraveling the peculiarities of pop culture, sometimes with awesome guests. So, if you're into the eccentric world of pop culture, listen and subscribe to All Too Real 2. Available wherever you find podcasts and on Age of Radio.